15 before the hour, Michael Patrick Shields asking you to jump around this morning, get up, get going, get off to work, get to school, do something. Maybe you're going to the gym. I hope it's a fun day for you, despite the fact that it's raining right now. The uh, Golf Association of Michigan puts on the Michigan Amateur Championship every year, and this year it is going to be at Boyne Highlands. And Ken Hartman knows that. He's on the other end of our line right now from the Golf Association of Michigan Senior Director of Rules and Competitions, the 100th Michigan Amateur Championship. Good morning to you, Ken. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good. I was watching Happy Gilmore last night. You know, that movie shows up on TV, it seems like, every couple of weeks, along with Tin Cup. And uh, and I don't suppose Happy Gilmore is going to be playing in the Michigan Amateur Championship, but it shows that golf can have a sense of humor, doesn't it? Correct. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. But no, there won't be any Happy Gilmore up there. There will be a lot of happy people, though, because a very funny guy, Gary McCord, who for years uh, struggled on tour, and then went on to the Champions Tour. Did a little bit better there, but uh, he made his mark really as a CBS golf analyst, and he still is with the CBS crew. You'd recognize him with the handlebar mustache. And he brought a real sense of humor to those broadcasts as well, even before David Faraday. And he's going to be part of the action when, at the uh, Amateur Championship this year? Correct. He's uh, flying in Monday morning. He's going to come up and do a clinic, and then he'll be our guest speaker at the, our Champions Dinner. And we're even having a post uh, kind of a wrap up at that Monday night that he might even have a time time to sit down with him uh, for a cocktail or something for a few minutes and get to know him a little bit better as well. Well, that'll be fun. That's June twentieth, is that right? Uh, correct. Monday, June twentieth is the uh, Champions Dinner, and then the tournament starts uh, Tuesday morning. Which course are you using at Boyne for the Michigan Amateur Championship? Uh, we are using the Heather Golf Course. Very uh, famous, classic Robert Trent Jones course right there uh, next to the hotel. And uh, we, we, there, there's a deadline. Who, first of all, who can compete in the Michigan Amateur Championship? Uh, they have to be a state resident. Uh, they have to have a handicap of 5.4 or better. Uh, there's no age limit, so you can be. We've had kids as young as 12 or 13 try to qualify, and we've had people over the age of 70 uh, even a, even play in the championship, but I think our oldest was like 73 or 74 that qualified and made it to the to the tournament. You have to have a certain handicap, or is it open to anyone who wants to try to qualify? Uh, you have to have a 5.4 or better handicap. Okay, and uh, when is the deadline to enter? We, uh, since Mother Nature has been so cooperative this <laughs> yeah. this spring, we we uh, no one has had a chance to get out and play that much. We have extended it to Friday. Uh, this Friday. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. And uh, how, what do you have to do? You enter and then uh, you get you go to a qualifying site? Correct. There's, a, there's one of 12 qualifiers spread out across the state, and if they're one of the lucky few at each site, they move on to the championship. Also this year, if they're not one of the lucky few, there's, another, there's a second chance qualifier uh, in June over in Auburn Hills at Fieldstone. So there's really... Uh, if they have a bad day, they can. There is another chance they could play a second round to try to qualify. First time and only time that we're the JM is doing this. Wow, it's like the ultimate reality show. You get a little second chance, huh? Correct. Correct. Uh, is it GAM dot org to register? They can, they can sign up through our website. They can give us a call at two four eight four seven eight nine two four two, starting at eight a.m. this morning, or they or they just go right on to the to the web and uh, and sign up themselves. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Appreciate you extending the uh, deadline till tomorrow, and uh, good luck. We'll see you up at Boyne. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate your time. All the best to you, sir. That's the Golf Association of Michigan. They administer amateur golf here in the uh, state of Michigan at uh, 10 minutes now uh, before the hour. Paul Eisenstein is on the other end of our line right now, one of the most, well, respected auto journalists in the world. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning. Good to be with you, Mike. You're going to be marching around at Chrysler today with Timothy Geithner and Sergio Marchioni? I, I don't know if I'll be uh, joining that. There's so many things going on today, but uh, I'm certainly going to have uh, somebody in my group keeping an eye on it. And where will we be able to read about that? At the DetroitBureau.com? The DetroitBureau.com. As a matter of fact, we'll have something up uh, a little bit, a little while from now, just previewing the fact that not only are we going to be seeing the uh, Treasury Secretary at the Jefferson Avenue player. Excuse me, my throat's going. <clears throat> We're going to also uh, almost certainly hear that uh, Marchione is going to come up with a deal that will help Chrysler, uh, Fiat, I should say, increase their stake in uh, Chrysler to about 51%. Is that a good thing? 
Well, if, uh, if what we're seeing so far in terms of the relationship between the two companies is any indication, <coughs> excuse mm-hmm. me, uh, yeah, it probably would be a good, good situation. There are some people that are not going to be happy mm-hmm. at the idea that we, we did this bailout of Chrysler and an Italian company is essentially going to take more than 51, 50 percent. Yeah. But uh, when you realize that Chrysler wouldn't have survived otherwise, the fact that they're doing seemingly as well that they're turning around probably should be good news for almost anybody. Okay, we will read about it in the DetroitBureau.com. A preview coming up shortly and then a full reaction tomorrow from Paul Eisenstein. Thanks a bunch. I'll see you in Detroit soon. See you then. Thanks. Somewhere around the world because Paul Eisenstein goes everywhere the auto business goes and they go everywhere. Okay, next hour, Governor Snyder will be with us to talk about his plan to reform Michigan education. He unveiled it yesterday uh, to some, in, in certain periods, chuckles at how uh, fast he wanted it to happen. He wants it all rolled out by the 4th of July. Is that going to be possible? He says, we've got to. He says, look, I got my people working in dog years. The budget's going to be done on time, it looks like. Let's go. Let's move. Remember, that's what he said when he got the Republican nomination for governor. Let's go. That's what he seems to be doing. It's Michael Patrick Shields in the American Metal Roof Studio here in the Gillespie Group Stadium District Building. We're just a couple blocks from the governor's office, in fact on this rainy Thursday morning, and the governor will join us. Senate Majority Leader Randy Richardville will join us, too, and the president of the MEA, Ira Salters, that's the Michigan Education Association, and the state superintendent of schools, Michael Flanagan. Next hour, you can uh, ask any of these people a question, if you like, at 888-900-9966, or ring in with your thoughts, especially if you're a teacher or involved in education. Stay tuned. Actually, uh, Here's one question coming in on email right now. How does tenure benefit the school children and the quality of education? And how does the MEA, in support of tenure, when it makes it nearly impossible for a school director to fire a poor performing teacher or administrator? MPS Big Show at AOL.com. You can get us there. MichiganTalkNetwork.com. Connect through Facebook and YouTube and you name it.